Welfare applicants skyrocket. Let's have a look. Good morning, everyone. I'm Florian Heiser, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I hope you're all having a good Saturday, avoiding your chores like I'm going to try to do today. I have my shine of coffee, as always, and I thought we'd have a look at this article just discussing the, frankly, shocking increase in welfare applicants over in the US. It ju if you see the graph, and we'll look at it in a moment, it just shot up to phenomenal amounts. Now, because of the what is it, job keeper payment, I wonder if our unemployment statistics will look that bad, but honestly, they're still going to go pretty, pretty high, guys. Pretty high. We've heard even before this pandemic outbreak, we we're hearing over and over again one business going under, one business in receivership. Retailers let, up, let people go every day. So let's have a look at this, guys. More than 6 million Americans apply for welfare in a single week as the illness accelerates unemployment. And I mean, this is a very emotionally manipulative image, sending your child out to beg. I, yeah, I guess that's, that's what some people do, isn't it? That's what some people do rather than, I don't know, have savings. But the number of Americans filing claims for unemployment benefits shot to a record high of 6.6 .6 million in the past week as more jurisdictions enforce stay-at-home measures to curb the illness pandemic. The latest job loss claims report from the government's employment and benefits sector, the most timely data on the economy's health, reinforces economists' views that the longest, uh, longest employment boom in US history probably ended in March. So the cracks are starting to appear. And if you follow any of the US commentators or any of the US news, you know that they've started printing, essentially. Their repo market, it's, it's, it, that's getting flooded with money to keep the liquidity going. And now the their reserve bank over there is just printing money. Keep it all going. And this is one thing everyone has to realize. When the government ha takes on debt to hand out money, that's all money we have to pay. When the Reserve Bank starts printing money, QE, you know, increasing the money supply, that it dwindles the purchasing power of everything we have. So you're screwed one way. We're all screwed because we've got mammoth debt. And then we're, those of us that have money, we're all screwed because uh, it loses its value. And I know people are saying in the comments, call it currency, which is a habit I need to get into. We'll just say fiat. We'll, see, we'll say fiat paper. You know, those have the paper, even though it's digital, I know. Initial claims for state unemployment benefits surged from 3.3 million to 6.6 .6 million for the week ending March 28, the government said. Data from the prior week was revised to show 24,000 more applications received than previous re previously reported, lifting the number to 3.307 million. It takes your breath away, said Justin Hood. Hugen Dorn, head of fixed income strategy and analytics at Piper Sander in Chicago. Obviously, the immediate reaction to something like this is going to be fear, especially when jobless claims were just about double what economists were even predicting, thinking dire scenarios. There you go. Remember, guys, economics is more art than science in some ways, particularly the, the more popular theories of economy you're talking very complex emergent systems with more more variables than we can possibly measure all interacting in unexpected ways and then the outcome is more complicated than you can predict this is why you know people making predictions uh there's so many variables it's going to be difficult to be accurate i, I think you can make some broad based assumptions say um you know i'd argue that the decline in demand from China for our natural resources, Australia going into mammoth debt and the RBA starting to do QE, our very low interest rates may have a negative impact on the economy in the short to long term. What do you reckon, guys? Do you think that's a, that's a fair prediction to make? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I mean, I've been talking to people 
you know, we were, the other day we were reading about Hutchie's cutting 200 staff. I had another mate, he's worried because he just heard on the grapevine, because this is how you hear these things in the construction game. He heard on the bra grapevine that a builder he's working for had just sacked 40 people. So he just froze credit on him. Because here's the thing, if for those that are employees, you may not realize as particularly as the, the tradies, the subbies, they've got it the worst. Okay, I, I'm here complaining as a, as a consultant, as an architect. I don't have to incur, you know, if I get a job, like the job I have now, my only additional costs that I've incurred have been re renting my software. So I've moved from buying the software now, it's all rented, so I've got to rent it for a couple of months. And we're not talking a lot of money here. But I've got a mate, he's, he has, to, as well as all the staff, office and all those costs, he needs to buy the materials. You know, and, and I've never heard of a builder paying up front to a subby. Can, let me know if that happens, guys, in the comments, please let me know if that has ever happened. But they're usually incurring all of that cost and they have to carry that cost. Often, you know, they may need to borrow money, they may need to take a cash advance from the bank or overdraw, overdraft. That's what my father did when he was a builder. And you carry that interest until you have to, until you get paid. But down, you know, if you hear a business is letting 40 people go, that will destroy confidence. So, okay, they owe you one month, maybe two months, maybe three months. And that's where, that's where this, uh, the risk of directors trading insolvent, that being removed or suspended from the Companies Act, that's what really gets me worried. And actually, I was, I was bitching to John Adams about that. I was asking, don't these, polit why are they doing this? Don't the politicians realize the implications? And he's going, they don't care. That's my biggest concern about all of this stuff that's gone, gone through. Because that's going to affect people that are still actually working. People that are still generating jobs and keeping keeping the economy going, what little it is, it's going to sputter out and the plane will start. You know, we've lost three engines now. That last engine's got an oil leak and what they've gone is they've gone and hammered some bullet holes into the radiator. They did it themselves to fake it. Now you've got water coming out of that engine. So that, that's why I'm worried about it because, you know, these guys, they have to carry all that extra financial load themselves. But then, you know, oh, maybe they should just borrow money. The government will guarantee it. But do you see how it's all potentially falling apart here, guys? <laughs> Why I'm worried? I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one to, to connect these pieces together. Could it just be our political leaders are just doing whatever they can just to, to push us through and to hell the consequences? Because that's what it feels like. Australia is slowly turning into a, a police state. We've all heard about you know, a guy getting fined for eating a kebab on a park bench. Here's the thing. You get these rules, these ordinances, and then you get these coppers who like to have power and authority. And some of them will be a little bit worse than others. And they'll start pushing and they'll start pushing. It's ludicrous. It's dangerous. It is dangerous. That coupled with all the economic turmoil, we'll have to see where Australia sits in a while. But let's jump back to this article. So you can see where, where my concerns are. The economic downturn is related to the illness crisis that is gripping the US, which now has the highest confirmed cases of the illness worldwide, with more than 216,000 people infected and over 5,100 deaths. So what we'll do is we will jump to trading economics right now and we'll have a look. At the time I, that I'm reading this, which is the morning after this article, US is now at 274,000, Italy 119. Look at the US jump from 244 to 274 in one day. Italy's only gone up four. Spain's gone up nine. You can see here that there's all the data here, trading economics, if you want to see the numbers, guys. Australia, we're at five, three. So we're ranked 20th in the world. Look at China, still just sitting there. Only at 81, wow. Does anyone believe that data? Does anyone believe it? So similar to last week's unemployment claim numbers, today's report reflects the sacrifices American workers are making for their families, neighbors, and country in order to slow the spread, U.S. Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia said in a statement. Well, I mean, they're kind of forced to, aren't they? Last week's claims data has no bearing on the closely watched employment report for March, which is scheduled to be released by Friday. And I'm literally just listening to a, a piece by uh, Peter Schiff as before I recorded this. 
And he's, he's talking about this, going, no one cares because it's already out of date. And this is the problem. It's already out of date. A lot of the data that they put forward and they're making decisions on. For the later, the government surveyed businesses and households in the middle of the month when just a handful of states were enforcing stay-at-home or shelter-in-place orders. It is, however, considered a primary uh, preview of the carnage that awaits. Well, true, it is. Retailers, including Marcy's, Cold Corp and Gap Inc., said on Monday they, were, they would forlorn tens of thousands of employees as they prepared to keep stores shut for longer. A rough look at the most affected industries suggests a potential payroll loss of over 16 million jobs, said David Kelly, chief global strategist of J.P. Morgan Asset Management in New York. The loss would be enough to boost the unemployment rate from roughly 3.5% to 12.5%. And that's at their, their contrived methodology, which I imagine is similar to ABS's. Look at that delta change, guys. Nearly four times as much. Damn. And here we go, the benefits that they can get. To put the current figures into perspective, applications for unemployment benefits peaked at 665,000 during the 07-09 recession, where 8.7 million jobs were lost. So everything's now been undone, pretty much, or half undone since then. Economists say the country should brace for jobless claims to continue escalating, uh, partly citing generous provisions of a historic 2.3 trillion fiscal package which was signed by President Donald Trump last Friday and the government's easing of requirements for workers to seek benefits. As a result, self-employed and gig workers who previously were unable to claim unemployment benefits are now eligible. In addition, the unemployed will get up to $600 per week for up to four months, which is equivalent to $15 per hour for, 40, for a 40-hour work week. By comparison, the government mandated minimum wage is $7.25 per hour, and the average job, jobless benefit payment was roughly 385 per person per month at the start of 2020. So, I mean, they have to ram that home. So, here's the thing. Some people are going to be better off, and here in Australia too, will be better off on unemployment or better off on the job keeper payment. Just think about that. And phones are ringing off the hook at New York crematoriums. While the U.S. economy is taking a hit, so is the state of New York, which is the epicenter of the crisis in the nation. I mean, this is turning into something where you may have the Division 2 or the Division playing out in New York. As the death toll climbs, New York crematoriums are extending their hours, burning bodies into the night. The destructive spread of the illness through New York has not yet reached its peak, but those who put the dead to rest have never been busier. Funeral homes and cemetery directors describe a surge in demand unseen in decades as, as a result of the illness, which has killed roughly 1,400 people in New York. We've been preparing for worst case scenario, said Mart Lanotel, Lanot, executive director of the New York State Funeral Directors Association, which is in a lot of ways starting to materialize. A majority of New Yorkers choose a cremation over burial, but the most popular US city has only four crematoriums, one in the Bronx, one in Brooklyn, and two in Queens. Directors at two of these locations say their daily workload has jumped from around 10 bodies to 15 or more straining resources. New York State has relaxed air quality regulations to allow crematory, uh, crematories to burn for longer hours. Still in interviews with Reuters this week, the crematory directors reported phones ringing off the hook and days busier than in decades. No one could really imagine this happening, said J.P. D. Troria, president of the Fresh Pond Crematory in Queens calling the pandemic among the most devastating events in his 52 years in the business. The crematory at Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn is taking between 50 and 20 bodies a day of late, nearly double its usual load, according to the cemetery president, Rich Moylan. So there you have it, guys. I mean, New York is, is going to be a disaster, it looks like. And I think I'd imagine and much of that has to do with the incredible population density they have there. I mean, it's just mathematics, sadly. The increase in unemployment is crazy, guys. 6.6 .6 million people in the US. What's that going to tell for Australia if the US goes down and their economy takes a hit? There's already 
issues with the trade war between China and the US. Now the US economy looks like it's going to hit recession, if not a depression. And will it take a long time to recover? Well, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to help us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on Patreon for a monthly donation. You can also join us here on YouTube for another monthly donation. I'd suggest you do one, not both. We also have the ability for you to support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay for your consumer purchases or independent reserve and KuCoin for the crypto traders out there. You can send us gold from the Perth Mint using Gold Pass. We also have PayPal for direct donations and merch. You can see the pocket squares behind me available from the Heiser Says website. And at Teespring, we've got Heiser Says mugs. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all later. Bye for now.